So Brainstorm Force yesterday made the beta version of Spectra Pro available for anybody to test out. You don't need a license, link is in the description if you want to try it, but it is unavailable for the next week or two. So if you do, you're going to need to jump on it. If you're watching this after that, well, you can't access it, unfortunately. But let's take a quick look at what is included in the Pro version of Spectra. If we scroll down on the page, you can see we've got access to dynamic content, which is what we're going to kind of focus on in this video. There's the loop builder, which we'll cover, the pop-up builder, there's animations included, there's an image gallery, an Instagram block, a countdown timer, a slider, user registration, user login, and a modal option. Now, these should cover most use cases for a lot of website designs. I'm not going to cover all of these. I'm going to cover the ones that I think are the most interesting. Things like modal, they're kind of pretty self-explanatory, countdown timer, sliders. They're all relatively simple and straightforward. Let's focus on the ones that I think are more interesting. So let's go ahead. I've already installed everything. And if we come into the dashboard now, we'll find you've got a Spectra option. Open up their dashboard, and inside here, you'll get your kind of welcome video. Then we've got the blocks and extensions. And this is one of those things I always like to see when it comes to any kind of plugin that adds functionality. And that's the ability to turn on and off the various different features that you do or don't want to use. So you declutter the interface, and ultimately, you should make the whole process of working just a little bit smoother and easier. If we hop over to the settings tab, you can see there's some basic settings, including where you can drop in your license key and so on when this is available as the full version. So I've already gone ahead and created a page using one of the templates. And if we scroll on through, you can see I've got a space inside you ready to take the information that I want for our dynamic side of things. So let's open up the list view, select our container, and we're going to go ahead and add in the new options. So we're going to click, we're going to do a search for loop, and there's our loop builder. Try not to confuse that with the built-in native function. Make sure you choose the right one. And then when we open that up, this now shows us a selection of different starter kind of designs we can use, or we can start from scratch. For this, though, let's just choose one of the predefined layouts as we got a quicker starting point. And then that opens everything up for us and pulls in what it thinks is the right info, which generally is going to be the posts. Now, if you take a look at the left-hand side, you can see there's our loop builder. And if we expand this inside the loop builder, there's our wrapper, which contains our loop. And inside there, you can see we've got a container. And inside the container are all the different elements or blocks that actually make up the individual loop item. Now, if you've ever used generate blocks or you've used uh, bricks builder or you've used elemental with the new loop function, this is going to be very, very familiar. What you have is you have the first sort of design inside this loop is the template that's going to be used for all of the different loop items. So all you need to do is customize this first one, and then all the other ones inside the design will update accordingly, taking on those different design aesthetics. So you change the image, the image sizes, all those kinds of things, all be picked up inside there. So all we need to do is go ahead and adjust anything we want. But before we do that, let's make sure we've got the loop selected and come over to the right-hand side with a block selected. Inside here, you can now control the various different aspects of the loop builder. So for example, we can adjust the number of posts per page. Let's say we want it six. We'll change that to six. And you'll see that now will update and show us additional posts. Alternatively, we can set that down to something like two. And now will that put those side by side. So we can then adjust the sizing of these to make sure they fit into the design we want. Let's set those back up to three. You can also set up a post offset. So if you want to offset things, you don't want the first post, for example, or a different design where you can offset those really easily. So all the things you'd expect. Then you've got your order and your order by. So all pretty straightforward and simple. If we come to the content section, this is where we can now control what's included in the loop. Now, at the moment, this is using the posts, but we can easily change that to pages. Or in our example, I've created an ACF post type with some taxonomies and some custom data. So let's choose accommodation. That will then go ahead, reload, and it will pull in now the data from that post type. So now we can go ahead and we can customize things. So we got the option for content. So we've so chosen the post type. We can choose to include sticky. We can search by keywords. We can also filter things based upon the taxonomies, the posts, and the authors. So for example, if we open this up, you can see the two taxonomies that I've created, accommodation location and the accommodation type. I can easily pick and choose those. So I might want to include hotel. That will update and show us only the hotels in the list. And I can say I also want to include hotels and inns so I can stack these on top of each other. Again, none of this is groundbreaking, but it's nice to see that it's included in here. 
And then if we want to, we can simply go ahead and clear all that out and put everything back to what it was. And you can do the same for your posts and you can choose what to include if you want specific posts to include or exclude. And the same goes for authors. So pretty simple and self-explanatory. So all the options you want are inside there. Come into advanced, you can see we can apply one of the other features that we have available now as part of the pro version of Spectra, which is animations. And you can see all the sort of standard uh, sort of things inside there, your zooms, your slides, your flips, your fades, and so on. So if you want to apply animation, you can do that and you can filter down to exactly what you want to animate. So maybe just the featured image, come into advanced, apply your animation, apply a fade down, and your image will animate in. I'm not the biggest fan of animations, but they can add a nice little subtle sort of change to your overall design should you want to. So now we've seen how to put the loop builder inside there, how you can sort of change what's actually displayed. Let's take a quick look at how you access the actual data itself. So if we choose something like the post date, for example, you'll see we get the little database icon. We can choose that for dynamic content, open that up, and then we've got the normal things you'd expect to see to be able to filter out what data is going to be included. You can see we can choose from current post, post type, archives, and so on. So there's lots of options inside you, including things like request parameters, short codes, or custom fields. And we'll come on to custom fields in a moment. So all the things you'd expect are inside you, and depending upon what you select, you'll have a different set of options. But what you can do is you can enable links, you can replace full content, or you can come into advanced and you can set things like your before, your after, and your fallback. This is very akin to what you have inside Elementor and what we've had in there for quite some time. It is useful. It is nice to have this. It's a very simplified way of working. So it's cool to see that we have that inside here as well. And the nice thing is where we're working with dates, you can see we can change the format. And I always like to see things like this because the default out of the box date, a lot of the time is not that user readable. So it's nice to see we can easily change those for whatever we want to use. So we'll leave that as it is and including custom, so that's nice to see. So now that we've seen how easy it is to edit and update content that's already been created as part of our loop, let's go ahead now and take a look at adding our own content in. Let's remove these buttons for now, so I don't want those inside this design. And what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and add in some new content. Let's add a new block in, we'll choose the heading option, and what we'll do is we'll format this now to be a div, so we can control the size and everything else to do with this. Let's click on the database icon, and you can see now we can choose the data source like we've already seen. So current post is perfectly fine. Then we've got our source fields. So we can choose from things like your standard post title, excerpts, and so on. But what we want is a post custom field. We'll select that and then it says the custom field. We can click and you can see the only option we have is custom input from manual input. So it would be nice that this would actually connect up to advanced custom fields or pods or Metabox, whatever it is, and pull in the fields that we have available, like you can do in Bricks and Elementor and so on. This is a bit more like you have with Generate Blocks, which you have to know what the name of the field is that you want to add in. So it'd be nice from a quality of life point of view to have that, but for now, not the end of the world. So to grab that custom input, let's hop over into ACF. For this example, we want the prices, so we'll just simply copy that field name from there, come back over, choose custom input, and drop in the custom field. There we go. We can enable this as a link if we want to, and we'll replace it with full content. But let's go ahead and click on Apply. Now, this is one of those weird things that I kind of get with this, is please select the text before applying settings. Well, what am I actually selecting? So this won't actually apply. Okay, this is me from the future just saying, I actually understand now, I'm editing this, and it actually makes a lot of sense. What it means is that you can actually go ahead and you can inline add content. So let me just quickly demonstrate what I'm talking about. If you look, you'll see we've got this Vancouver Drive, and this is basically the dynamic data that sits in the middle of that actual content. So if I undo this, I go ahead, you see your home heading. So, well, it doesn't really matter too much about that. Let's just select that, click the database icon, choose what I want, let's just say the post title as an example, and click apply. And you can see now that adds in the dynamic data in between that text. So from that point of view, it does actually make a lot of sense. And it is a really cool feature. It just wasn't that obvious to start off with. So just so you know that maybe the rest of this won't make a lot of sense, but I'll cut that bit out anyway. So anyway, back to the video. Because this is really frustrating. Do the same thing again. Pop that inside there, click apply. Now, if we jump into advanced, you can see we can put we can put the price here, for example, and we'll put the pound sign and we'll say per day. And we'll click outside or we'll click apply or update. And this now shows one of the other things that I think needs to be addressed. I haven't included a space after the price, but you'll notice 
that there's a space after that, which means that the before is a little bit problematic because you want that pound sign, the currency symbol in this example, to be flush up against the actual price. Hopefully this will be one of those things that will be addressed before the final rates and we won't be sort of arbitrarily having that space inserted. We can control it by just adding a space into the before and after and so on. And you see there's all the data we've put in there, including the prices per day and so on, which for some reason hasn't picked up my styling. But you know, anyway, it's a beta product at the moment. But it is relatively simple and straightforward to add that information in dynamically. And you're not limited to there. You can use the dynamic content pretty much anywhere. For example, we could select this about us. You've got your dynamic content. Uh, you can access info from there. So if you're creating templates using full site editing or whatever options you're using, you can pull in that dynamic data. So that's nice to see. So it's a good starting point. I do think there needs to be some kind of fine tuning to kind of tidy those little quirks up to change those sort of like inconsistencies. But it's a good starting point and it is still a beta product. So I'm hopeful it'll all be sorted out by the time the final release is actually out. Now, one of the other cool features is the ability to create your own custom registration and login pages without a reliance upon another third party tool. So let's go and add in a new page. We'll call this login. And we'll publish it for now. Let's go and add in a container and let's go and look for that login. There we go. There's our login form. And you see this builds out basically a full login form for us. If we expand that the left hand side, you can see there's our login form and inside there we can control the heading. That's pretty much all we can control there. But we can come into our login form and then all the options over on the right hand side allow us to customize the look, feel and what we do and don't see. So you can, if you want to, hide things like the icons, show those icons. You can show register information. So if you don't want people to register, you just want to log in, you can enable or disable that. You can control your login button, your success, error messages, redirects, all those kind of cool options. So you can choose exactly where anyone goes. In your login form, you can also choose things like whether you want the forget password link and so on. You can come into your styles, so you can customize the look and feel of this. So you can adjust your form width, for example, so you can control how that looks. You can adjust your row gaps to space things out and make everything look neat and tidy. All those options are available for you inside your and you can customize pretty much every aspect of this. If you come into advanced, for example, you can apply animations to this. You can even apply responsive conditions where you can hide and show it and all those kinds of good things. If you want to customize the container, you can simply select the container. You can customize it in the predefined settings. You kind of get the picture how this works. It's very simple. Then you can update this. You've now created your own custom login page. The same thing applies if you want to create a registration page. Let's add a new page in, call this registration. Add our container, search for the registration, and there's your registration form. Again, you can control all the aspects of this. Want to show or hide your labels? You can do that. Not good for accessibility. Make sure they're displayed. Again, you can show or hide your icons if you want to, your login information, your register button, what happens after registration. You've got some options inside there to redirect them, to auto login, or to just send an email. And again, you can stack these on top of each other. So if you want to send an email, which would be a good thing, you can then also send an email to the new user that's just registered with the relevant information. None of this is rocket science, which is a good thing. You have controls over those sort of different aspects. So we can publish that and we'll now have our customized registration and login pages. The final thing I want to touch upon is the options for creating your own pop up builder. If you open that up, you can see I've created a test pop up, but let's create a new one. Let's just disable that, create a pop up. We'll give it a name and then you can choose whether you want to have an info bar, which kind of sits at the top or the bottom, or you can choose a pop up. Let's go with a standard pop up and this now creates a kind of placeholder pop up, which you can then customize. If we open up the options on the left hand side, you'll see it all operates in a relatively simple way. Your pop up builder is like your container and then inside there is what you want to be displayed. So let's get rid of this info box. Let's remove that. Let's go ahead and add in a form. We we'll choose this form and we'll say we want a newsletter form. So we'll choose that and you can see that's now inserted a newsletter form, which point again, we can customize this. This is a native function inside Spectra. So you can customize the look of this if you want to. And also you can use one of the pre-built designs or you can go ahead and you can style this completely manually from exactly what you want. So all those options are there for you. Let's say we also want to add in something else. So we want to add in a, an image, for example. So let's say insert before. We'll set this to be an image. Choose our media library and select an image from here. 
Let's grab this nice sunset -y looking one and we'll select that. Now you can see the problem is that's made the pop-up scrollable, so we can easily address that. We'll select our pop-up builder and you can see we can adjust our pop-up max height. So we can adjust this to make sure it compensates for anything we put in. So now we set the max height on this. You can see we can control all the other options inside here. If we come to the close option, we can choose the close button, how it, this is dismissible and so on. All pretty standard options. But again, like I say, it's nice that they're all included. Now you may be wondering, how do you access the ability to choose where and when and how the pop-up actually works? Well, to do that, we click on the little spectra icon in the top corner, and then you can see this now gives us the pop-up builder and we can choose the trigger type, delays and so on. So you've got load, your exit intent or element. So if someone clicks on something, you can use it to trigger this pop-up, like a sign up form or a register form or whatever you kind of wanted. Let's choose the load as an option. We'll say we'll delay this two seconds. You can choose your display conditions. So you can choose if this is on specific templates, specific pages, those types of things. We'll leave this as entire website. And you can also choose negative options for display conditions. So you can see do not display on these particular ones. So, you know, again, like I say, all standard stuff. We'll say we're happy with that. We'll return to the post. Then you can choose how many times this is displayed so you don't annoy your users. You can set this to one, or you can really pee them off and have this displayed indefinitely. But if you don't, you can see you can choose what options. So it's all really simple and straightforward. Let's publish this. Let's go ahead and open up a new incognito window. Let that load in. Give it two seconds, and there's our pop-up. You can see there's our image and everything else, and we can now go ahead and interact with our pop-up or annoy our visitors, whichever method you prefer to employ. So overall, I think Spectra Pro is a solid starting point. The only thing I would like to have seen is to not lock all of the dynamic functionality behind a paywall. This is something that I think is too often employed, and I can understand totally why companies are doing it, but I prefer the way that you have this with Generate Blocks, where you have the core functionality of dynamic content. And if you want more advanced features, that's where you pay to upgrade to the pro or premium version. So I would love to see even some basic functionality included in the free version of Spectra. That being said, though, I think it's a solid starting point. Pricing, I don't know yet what that's going to be. My understanding is if you have the kind of top tier Brainstorm Force package, the Astro package, it will be included, but I could be wrong on that one. Don't take that as gospel. But what are your thoughts? You tell me, are you testing out Spectra Pro? Is this something you've been looking forward to trying out for yourself? Let me have your thoughts, opinions, and feedback in that comment section down below. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C, and this is WP Tetson. Until next time, take care.